Gauntlet 2018 semifinal match here at Lock and Load 2018. Hello. I'm Will Hungerford, one of the developers of Privateer Press. With me is another developer and uh, my partner in crime, Will P Pagani. Or Pil Wagani, if Pil you've been Wagani. following along. And uh, we have got a really awesome match to bring to you uh, this morning. So uh, we only have two matches going on. The one we're not streaming is Jeff Everett versus Pat Dunford. Yes. Uh, the winner of that match is going to face the winner of this match we are streaming, which is Aaron Whaley all the way from Australia versus Canadian, uh, Canada, Canada's own <laughs> Tim Banky. Uh, Canadian zone. Yeah, Canadian it's zone. A new type of soda that's coming out later. I yeah, think. absolutely. So um, the, ma the match that we have today is going to be uh, Madrek One Band of Heroes mm -hmm. versus Scar One Dark Host. Yes. And then the other match for those wondering at home, uh, I believe, is the Dreamer playing in Dark Menagerie it is yep. against uh, Ostrom playing in a regular. Yeah. The cool thing, real fast, uh, Pat Dunford went double Dark Menagerie for this tournament. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That is that is classic Pat. Yeah. He's all about Dark Menagerie here. So as the players are deploying, let's talk about their lists really fast. Sure. Yeah. So I'll go over Aaron's list right now. He's playing Dark Host. He's got Scar 1, a Scarlock Thrall, a pair of Stalkers and an Inflictor, two Wraith Engines. Uh, Tartarus, Derek Wraith, a Necrotech and some Scrap Thralls, max unit of Bane Knights, and a max unit of Bane Warriors with their command attachment. Mm -hmm. And, and then, then we've also got uh, Tim's list here, which is Madrak 1, a Dire Troll Bomber, uh, which I really like that because you can get the uh, Far Strike on Madrak for that Blood Boon action. Mm -hmm. Very spicy. All about it. All about it. Uh, he's then got a Dire Troll Mauler, mm -hmm. a Trollkin Rune Bearer, uh, a fell collar hero, hero, a stone scribe chronicler, a full krill stone with a stone scribe elder, which is the normal one, not the northkin one. Uh, minimum unit of long riders, maximum units of champs with scaldy and two trollkin sorcerers, and then a max unit of fin blades with an officer and a drummer. Yep. Uh, <coughs> those fin blades, I think, are going to play a pretty key role in the beginning of this game, mm -hmm. where they're going to get up there, uh, they're going to contest things very quickly and kind of jam some stuff up, while the champions and the long riders can really get into position. Uh, to just sort of get ahead on this attrition game uh, would be my bet for what Tim's trying to do here. And then Aaron, <coughs> Aaron's got these double Wraith engines. Mm -hmm. uh, Tim does have the normal Krillstone, so yes. he can get rid of that in Corporeal. Yep. So he, he absolutely has an answer to that uh, built into his list. And then, um, of course, there's also a bunch of Banes running around, which is not the best for Tim, I don't think. Like He's relying on a, a pretty good amount of armor here mm -hmm. uh, and or boxes coming out of that Trollkin unit champion. Or Trollkin... Trollkin unit champion, yes. Trollkin <laughs> champion unit. Um, each one of those banes that does connect there is going to cause a lot of damage to be shifted around with Sanguine Bond from yeah. that unit. Uh, so he doesn't actually have to hit too, too many times before he starts forcing all these tough checks out of these mm -hmm. champions. Uh, and then with the Wraith engines, of course, they're going to be making uh, machine rates, which is not really something Tim wants to see either because then he has to make sure that he's got that uh, anti-incorporeal effect out of his Krillstone so those guys don't just get in the back and sort of start gumming everything up. Absolutely. Now, real fast, uh, if you would use the telestration, please. We're doing spread the net, and we're going to point out where everything is. All right. So our scenario is spread the net. That's the one with the two rectangular zones, one circular zone, and two flags. Looking oh, at our scenario we elements. We can, just, we can just hit one of these up. Look at that. Yeah, there's that nice little thing. <laughs> it's beautiful. We'll get to see it. Straight from Steamroller 2017. This is one of the last Steamroller 2017 games that's going to be played, period, as Steamroller 2018 drops next week. Mm -hmm. But if we pull up the top-down view, we can kind of point out a couple things so everybody sure. watching at home knows what they're looking at. So you've got the, the big zone in the middle, and there's also a forest mm -hmm. in the middle of that zone mm -hmm. right there. There is an uh, mm -hmm. acid pool off to the bottom right near one of the flags. It's got this cute little, uh, this cute little tube right here just kind of dumping goo yep. into it. Up near the flag to the top left of the screen, you see that those two little red things in that circle? Right that's a dense it. fog. So that's not fire. That's just regular dense fog. And there's the flag there. Uh, the top right zone has an obstruction in it. Mm -hmm. There's a forest right next to that. They've already taken the trees out of the one directly to the bottom right of that zone, but that is a forest template right, right there. Then you can kind of see the other forest template to the left near the other rectangular zone, and there's another obstruction there towards the bottom right. So that's our terrain elements for this game. We've got that here, and then, of course, these two uh, Dark Host clouds. Right? Yeah, from the theme Force Benefit. Uh, there's also on the table, I believe, an obstruction. So there is a wall on the table, but uh, from the top down, it's maybe a little hard to make out. I do believe it's connected to the, z the circular zone right Looks there. Like about right there. All right, everybody. So now you have an idea of the layout of the table. Uh, shout out to Danny Samuels, our studio terrain maker. Uh, he's made a bunch of custom terrain pieces, and these are custom zones made to match the table that we're playing on. Quick note as they're deploying, this is a uh, all non-American IG finals. We have Australia, Canada, Canada, and England 
as our four players. So our fellow Americans, do better next time. Hey, Constance Blaze almost made it in here, all right? Well, you should have never hired you because you could have been doing this. I, I could have been, yeah. I'm joking. I'm happy we hired you. Yay! <laughs> I'm glad to be here, too. Glad to be here, too. So, so I'm not entirely certain the uh, the game plans that's going to go on here. I think this is going to be a pretty big slugfest. Uh, I'm going to guess neither player particularly gets ahead on scenario very quickly here. Uh, there's a little bit coming out of the cricks. Uh, I think they're going to have a better time. They're going to have a better time kind of getting this flag going right here uh, than necessarily Tim is here. And I think that's because there's things like this obstruction, this wall, this forest is all going to stop Tim from being able to kind of come around this direction. Uh, he can do it, of course. Like, there is enough room to fit the models through and stuff, but it's going to bottleneck him pretty hard here and here. Um, <clears throat> and then, of course, like, he does have a fell caller, so we can't get Pathfinder, but even though this kind of thing, your, your fell caller may not necessarily want to be dealing with this, maybe it's going to be helping these guys out down here. So it's, it's just important to kind of see what's, see what's going on, uh, where Tim puts his fell caller, where, where he starts his first turn, the smaller being over here is kind of interesting to me. I think he's trying to commit for this zone right here uh, to make sure that he's going to have a war beast over there to score it. Uh, Aaron, similarly, uh, big old big old Wraith Engine down here. Wraith Engine can take this zone pretty well. There's a wall right here. A Wraith Engine behind this wall kind of hanging out in this area, completing this uh, line of sight blocking wall, I think is going to be really powerful. There's not a lot of space to get things through this hole. You can hide behind this wall so that models can't get over it and attack your Wraith Engine. I think it's a very safe place for that Wraith Engine to hang out. And because it's incorporeal, it can move through this, it can move through this, no problem. No problem at all. <clears throat> uh, so I think Aaron is going to take these banes over here. He's going to try and control up this flag. I think he's going to be playing right here, go this direction, uh, complete this line of sight blocker with his Wraith Engine, hold down his zone. Say, if you come into my zone, yep. I'm going to beat you up. Right. And I think this obstruction inside of this zone right here is going to be a little hard for Tim, especially considering there's not a whole lot of stuff over here. This is just three, uh, just three long riders. So uh, three long riders and this mauler. Uh, they really, I'm not really sure they can compete against this entire unit of banes here, right? Like if they run up, this guy gets in this zone. These these guys start coming this direction. The banes I think are going to pretty quickly overwhelm this zone. Mm -hmm. uh, and while they may not score that zone, I think they're going to have a pretty good chance at contesting that zone to stop Tim from scoring. Uh, and then this right here in the middle, probably not getting scored this game at all, if I had to guess. There's going to be a nice big scrum going down right in this At least area. not to the end when it wouldn't matter anymore. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, by the way, we saw the handshake, and the game is underway. So here we go. These fin blades are running. I think uh, the majority of this game is going to take place in this area right here. It is is primarily where the engagement is going to end up. So let's see how Tim does this. Uh, we we did not see. give these guys Pathfinders what it looks like. He is running around that obstruct or that uh, that acid pool, which I guess he doesn't want to get corroded either. So, <clears throat> who uh, <clears throat> ah. All right, so we do have a little bit of corrosion going on here, and the uh, the krill stone they're talking about it is probably going to be removing those things. So. And we do have chat up here for all of our Twitch followers. Uh, if you do want to ask us some questions or you think you noticed something cool that's going on or you want to make predictions about the game, mm -hmm. make sure to throw it on into Twitch chat and we yep, can give you a absolutely. shout out. Make sure to cheer on your favorite player, maybe even your favorite country. <clears throat> maybe even your favorite Wraith engine. Maybe even your favorite Wraith engine. My, bum, my, bum, bum. <laughs> so I talked to Aaron before the game. And uh, this, this Wraith engine is named Bill. And this one is named Ted. No relation to Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, though. They're making a third one of that, by the way. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, beautiful. That's yeah. going to be great. So uh, if you are Team Bill or Team Ted, make sure to put it in chat. See with Rachel. With? With? With. She. <laughs> I just literally cannot form words. <laughs> You're okay, buddy. I can't do it. I can't do it. We're all going to die. <clears throat> um, so I'm guessing right. Madrax is going to pop on up here, cast up a sure foot. Yeah. Uh, sorry. It's not Surefoot anymore. It is Chosen Ground. Yep. And we got a Harmonious Exploitation cast on him by the, uh, the Rune Bearer. Oh, mm -hmm. looks like there's a little, a little pig back there that's a little bumped up on his buddy. That happens. He's, he's hanging out. Yeah, it, we see him. He fixes it immediately. Just Sorry, to, it's not Chosen Ground. It's Even Ground. Even Ground, yep. We, we have a lot of teams being called out in chat right now. Your, your options are Bill or Ted. <laughs> not Team Pat. 
I guess Team Pat works. That's a different game, though. I see Team Pat. Team Rathrock. Team, Team Rathrock. Mm. That'll work. Team Tongue Tied. Team I Socrates. Like I'm all. I'm on Team Tongue Tied, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we got combat warning up there. Removes all the continuous effects. Get that plus two armor. Oh, uh, nice! Really so they, they all ran stuff. into the uh, the acid pool and then just got rid of it all. Yep, dig it. The stone's gonna gonna awaken for one. But uno. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I see hashtag team puns to offend me again. Please don't. To to offend Will? Which Will? Is that the pun? <gasps> dun, dun, dun 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 pun. <laughs> Let us know your thoughts in chat uh, right now if what you think is going to happen. And if you're watching this on YouTube later, uh, just don't look at the comments because you already know. It's true. It's true. Champions here. Looks like they picked up Pathfinder and they're just running on through. Yep, running through the woods. Again, those templates you see that look like cracked ground, uh, they took the woods out. Those are forests. There's also the cracked just ground larger one. zones, which are the actual scenario one. elements, the central yes. circle zone and the two rectangles. So hopefully there's no confusion there with anybody watching at home. Especially with there being a forest inside. Well, it's got a lot of grass on it. I think we, yeah. can, we can see the edges there. And you can see them right here on this, this camera pretty well. You can see this template. And, of course, the zone is right here. So, Yep, yep. Just to make it clear for everybody at home exactly what's going on there. All right. Looks like the Long Riders just running. Yep. They go forever. <clears throat> so I think these guys can do a lot of work into these banes. Um which is good for Tim, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm calling this this top zone is probably not going to be scored too often by the smaller because I think these guys are going to die pretty quick. But I think they will take out a good chunk. Do you think it's more valuable to try and line up the perfect bull rush with them, or just get in there and, and get your impact attacks and swing? I mean, I think it needs. I think that heavily depends on what exactly Aaron does in the southern zone. Like, does he play it really aggressively for scenario? Yeah. And if he does, I think you just need to get in there and make sure you're contesting this flag. Okay. If he doesn't, I think you have another turn or two where you can try and line up those bull rushes. Yeah. And I guess the question becomes, if you have the time, do you think it's more valuable to try and probably get those in if you can? Well, we'll find out. We'll see how it yep. plays out. Yep. We're talking about, uh, they're, they're looking at some, some Krillstone, <clears throat> some Krillstone ranges to get rid of these, uh, to get rid of these Wraith Engines and Corporeal. So it looks like we're going to proxy that a little bit. Yep. See Aaron putting down his table marker for his uh, Wraith Engine, just getting an idea of how far he can go and what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So he wants to stay away from this bomber in melee, it sounds like, because he doesn't want to get it raged up and then get in there and really just punch, get this, murdered, punch right? this Wraith Engine. But yeah. it's only relevant if that Krillstone can make it over to him. So Correct. So that only matters if the Krillstone can make it. Okay, so it looks like uh, Aaron just powered up, no allocations, just beyond normal power up. Yep. <clears throat> then the Wraith engine is saying just outside of nine inches of the bomber. Which does stop him from charging, right? Yep. So if he does want to get that Krillstone up there and get rid of that incorporeal, the bomber won't be able to charge. Yeah. It'll either run and jackhammer from Madrak or it'll throw some bombs. Yep. Both Vain of which are slightly less terrifying than a straight up charge. Yes. I, well, I mean, significantly, right? Because if you can straight up charge, it's you can just charge. I mean, he gets six attacks, or five attacks, I think, because he's Fury 4, and then Madrak yeah. can then jackhammer yeah. him for even more. So, like, I, I think you just definitely lose your Wraith Engine if you let him charge. Uh, and that is, of course, assuming that that Krillstone can run up there. So, so uh, with the down, top-down view, let's, let's show exactly what, uh, what can go on with this Krillstone for just a moment here. So this Krillstone has an ability um, that while you are within its aura range, which is based on the number of Fury it's got, which is mm -hmm. located back here. It's probably got three or four at the moment, if yeah. I had to guess. Um, <clears throat> That uh, that guy can, I, I forget exactly the name of the rule, but he can remove incorporeal for models inside of his aura. Mm -hmm. uh, so he can use his aura, and, and then run. he can run it right on up in <coughs> here. Because for those of you watching, it's not an action. It's an anytime ability. Correct. So this guy can run five, run five, get to about there. And then depending on how much focus ends up on this guy, it's probably about there right now. I'm going to guess Aaron placed this properly so that he cannot be inside of that aura, which, uh, if true, is fantastic. We don't have to worry about this at all. Yeah. The thing is so. that the stone can run 12 inches, and the aura can get up to upwards of like 11. So you're looking at 
what, a 23 inch threat range of yeah. being able to remove on corporeal. So I think the Wraith Engine's absolutely in from that board position, right? Sure, but he's th he does have to put a bunch of more focus on it, right? Oh, yeah, no, it it's, is, a, it's a heavy it investment to, to do so. It's a heavy investment to do so. Which does mean that Madrak goes first, yeah. right? As well. Yeah. So this is an order of activation issue. Uh, it's a threat range issue, so that's probably why Aaron stayed outside of that that yeah. bomber melee range. Yeah, because it's a possibility, and why not? Why why put yourself in the threat range if it is possible? Uh, thank you, chat. That ability is called Spirit Chaser. So so Bane Warriors are just popping on up here. They're staying outside of this threat range. I think he's going to end up, uh, yeah, so he's hiding behind these clouds, right? So if these long riders do come up, mm -hmm. they're not going to be able to attack, really. Mm -hmm. um, if they commit into the into the flag, uh, they'll get advanced and attacked by these Bane Warriors. Yep. Uh, if they don't, I think we'll see, see like this little game of chicken go on behind these clouds. <coughs> There's not a whole lot of range attacks here for these Wraith engines to supply a lot of support to this army, so I think they're going to be mostly combat pieces yeah. uh, doing that kind of stuff. I do want to talk briefly while they're they're making these moves about the level of play, the cleanliness of play between these players and all the players we've been streaming in both Masters and, and Iron Gauntlet, especially the Iron Gauntlet games that we watched yesterday. Um, I just love the declarations of intent and how clearly communicative everyone is with each other and just the, the show of sportsmanship we've seen. Absolutely. You know, Corey, Corey Doyle in particular had some really amazing showman sh uh, shows of sportsmanship yesterday. Uh, he made a mistake that... Um, could have easily frustrated or angered another player to tilt to the point where they'd have just thrown their entire game, where they could have stomped away from the table or acted inappropriately, and Corey dealt with it uh, very, with, with grace uh, and, and professionalism, and so shout out to Corey uh, for the, how he handled uh, his game yesterday <laughs> during the Iron Gauntlet. It, it was unfortunate. It was unfortunate, it was but you know what, man? He, he showed, he was really a, like a shining example of great sportsmanship in the face of adversity. Definitely, yes, and and I think that's absolutely something uh, that should be stressed at events like this, is winning games is great. Everyone loves to win games, but sometimes you're going to lose a game, and losing with grace is almost more important to me than than winning yeah. without that. So. <laughs> So I know that we like all four players here in the in the finals of IG. We we you know we got Jeff, we got Pat, we got Tim, we got Aaron. Uh, mm -hmm. Chat, I want to ask you as you're watching, do you feel there's a favorite to win? You know, not just who you're rooting for, but knowing the players we've got. And these are all top level players. We've got Tim Banky with the trolls. We've got Aaron rocking the cricks. Uh, his other list is the Asphyxious Nine Slayer list. Uh, Tim's second list. Uh, is uh, Power of Dunia with Borka 2. We've seen him run that one before. I think he brought it at uh, Adepticon. Mm -hmm. We know that uh, Pat Dunford has double Dark Menagerie, one Heretic, one Dreamer. Mm -hmm. uh, and Jeff Everett has Osram in Irregulars, and I do not remember off the top of my head his second list. Do you? I don't. Yeah, it's double, double Mercs. So for those of you watching, you know, what do you, what do you, who do you think is going to make it? Who do you think is going to come out on top? Remember Pat, Pat being the last year's winner with uh, Convert, uh, sorry, Signar. Trying to figure out his stalker positioning here to see where, uh, how far forward he can go without being in line of sight or being in, in charge. I'm trying to tuck a stalker in right behind this forest here to get as absolutely aggressive with it as he can. Yep. And these stalkers are terrifying with Scar, right? Like, they can pick up Dark Guidance, they can pick up the feet, mm -hmm. they go up to very high pow with boosted attack rolls, so. They may end up with a judge just to make sure what's going on here. <laughs> you know, the Eviscerators are talking about the stalkers, them just having flat out grievous wounds. You know what trolls love? That, not that. Not Grievous Wounds. <laughs> J 
chat seems to have a lot of faith right now in uh, Tim Benke and Pat Dunford. So Twitch chat, we'll see if uh, that's the match you end up watching in the finals or if you're going to get a very different result. It's way too early to know. Yes. Here we see the Wraith engine moving up, checking his threat ranges, looking out to those fin blades, making sure he is not, you know, if he loses the incorporeal, he's not going to get beat up. At least not too much, right? Yeah, I mean, he might give up one or two charges, but he's not looking to get more than that. Yeah, I don't think two or three fin blades is really going to do a whole lot here. I think Tartarus wants to stay... Uh, safe back there so that these fin blades do commit in, right? Yeah, like he gets to go in there, in there and just cause a veins. nightmare. Yeah. yeah. It's it's not what they want. It's not what they want. And of course, we also have Derek Wraith, who's going to hang out right over here. <clears throat> okay, so Derek Wraith does mortal fear to the shock of nobody. Absolutely no one. Huh. We have a, a call out from chat. What happens is someone wins this game and then Pat wins the next one. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of... Uh, That's from Mark Larry in Pat Twitch here. chat. And Oboros Ryan says, don't jinx it. What if Scar gets charged by the Finn Blades? She's camping six. She's got mortal fear. She's happy about all of this. So I talked a lot about clock management in a lot of the uh, the previous games that were going on. Yep. And uh, Aaron here is on his first turn. Mm hmm It has been 12 minutes. Yep. That is a very, very long first turn to yeah. me. Uh, why, he's he's we, being very cautious here, right? Uh, but that that's that's a lot of time to spend on a turn one just positioning stuff. And why do you so. think that was? Because in Aaron's game where he played against Corey, mm -hmm. we saw Aaron go into his, I believe, third or fourth turn where uh, Corey had 12 minutes left and Aaron still had on his se uh, third 44, turn. 44, I think. Four, yeah, was. 44. So why do you think that this first turn was so different? Well, I think he's a little more worried uh, about the threat ranges, right? And with Slayers, you can play a little more fast and loose. Mm -hmm. uh, if you lose a Slayer, you're not a huge deal about it. But if he loses these Wraith engines early, that could be really bad. Um, those fin blades can do a lot of work in infantry, so he's got to make sure he doesn't give him any great targets there. But I, I think, I, I think this is uh, hopefully, hopefully Aaron can get a little more f uh, quick with his decision making, yeah. right? Like I, I don't want, I don't want to see Aaron just getting clocked out here. Nobody wants to see a game in by clock, right? It is, yeah. it is a, a way you can lose the game, but it's never the most exciting. That is true. Uh, Lunchbox2965 on chat asks, who's on the other table? The other table is Pat Dunford versus Jeff Everett. It is Ostrom in Irregulars versus the Dreamer in Dark Menagerie. Mm -hmm. these, uh, these champions are going to pick up some magic weapons from their, their sorcerer back there, and then they're just going to run on up behind this wall. And we are getting a couple more measurement checks here from Tim. So this to me is looking a lot like a Madrak feet turn, which I think is pretty much exactly what Aaron wants. Yep, no charges. <laughs> no charges from the feet uh, is not great, but I don't think he's really going to be feeling the pressure at the moment to really get up there and deal with these champions this turn. Mm -hmm. And by uh, feeding first, Tim is giving up the chance to heal all of these guys up after a lot of Sanguine Bond action. So I, I think Tim um, is probably going to feed this turn. And what that's going to do is it's going to slow down Aaron, which mm -hmm. will uh, give Tim a little bit more of the board to play with. Yep. But I don't think it's going to buy him a whole bunch, at least not on this top part of the map right here. Like this part, I don't think really cares too much about the feet. Uh, these long riders, unless they do like something crazy and run down here, mm -hmm. are just not even going to be in the feet. So they don't even matter for it. So if these long riders run this way. That's kind of interesting. Uh, I'm, I bet that one of them is just going to walk within four inches of this flag. <laughs> to stop the point from being scored and make him commit in some of these banes. Sure. Uh, that's going to be my guess. There's our four-inch stick <coughs> coming in there. He might even um, swing Madrak up here, kind of this angle, and try and catch that guy just in the very edge of the feet for the for the bane, or for the, the, the well, not wolf rider. They don't ride wolves. Long, the, the long rider. The, there we go. You got him, man. You, you I'm, okay? I'm, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it through the day. <laughs> Word, here we go. Words are hard today, huh? They are. It happens. They are indeed. It's Sunday at Lock and Let, everybody. We've been up for basically a cumulative, I don't know, straight Three days. 97 yeah. hours. Yeah. It's been pretty good. Uh, yeah, so Tim's declaring the, sort of this, this top puzzle solved. Uh, I'm not sure this guy lives if he walks right there. 
Like, there's a stalker hanging out. And this guy can just go deal with him. We can score our flag. We can keep on this game plan that I think Aaron's going for here of these two uh, scoring elements being very, very relevant and sort of getting Tim to come over here. Yeah. You can probably get a run from this guy into the zone, um, maybe with a death ride from Derek Wraith. So uh, I'll bet somebody, somebody's going to contest this up here. The bomber's forfeiting movement to aim. And is uh, bombing a Wraith engine. Okay, they're figuring out where the deviation went. <clears throat> they're checking AoEs here. Looks like he's going to pick up two Bane Knights in the blast damage. Maybe Derek Wraith. Maybe an Inflictor. I don't think this is going to be too relevant here. All right, they're calling in the judge. Our table judge being Will Schick. Will Schick's pausing the clock. Yep. <laughs> We've uh, we've paused up our clock. We're gonna figure out exactly where this this deviation. Let's figure out where the AOE is deviating, deviating to and who it is hitting. Here we see the top of Wilshik's head. It is glorious. Look at this man right here. He's a professional deviation templater. Yeah. Well, he went to deviation templating school. Yeah. Uh, that's how we got his job at Privateer Press, actually, right? Like, I played a lot of tournament War Machines, so I'm very familiar with the game. So that's mm -hmm. how I got mine. Schick is just excellent at placing deviation templates. Mm -hmm. It's, it's not a very useful skill, but it definitely applies to his current position. All right, All right. so it does look like we've got a Derek Wraith. I think that's a Stalker over there, and an yeah. Inflictor are the three models hit. Agreed. Uh, Tim is currently determining whether or not he wants to boost damage on all three models hit, that being the Inflictor, again, the Bane Knight, and Derek Wraith. So oh. we're, we're not going to boost on the Inflictor here. We're just going to boost on Derek Wraith and the Stalker. Yeah. Stalkers are basically made out of noodles. Yeah. It wasn't the Bane Knight that got hit. It was the Stalker over there that we, we are, he was kind of hidden right Correct. now behind Derek yes. Wraith. Uh, so the, these noodles just took some damage. Uh, Derek Wraith takes nothing because he's actually impossible to kill. Yeah, actually. And we're reloading and throwing again. We will not shield guard. <laughs> All right, so Aaron, the second... So Aaron Tim, corrects Tim. The Wraith engine is still incorporeal and does not take any damage from yeah. the attack. So him actually missing the first attack allowed him to deviate and actually do anything. The second shot hits, connects, and then nothing and happens. And then nothing happens, yes. I thought that was actually what Tim was doing, was hoping he missed. Yeah, which was why I was kind of confused when he aimed. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I think you want to miss this, but... Here we go. I mean, if he was wanting to deviate, he would have just aimed at something else, right? He would have aimed at Derek Wraith, who was out of range, and then just let it deviate. Sure, sure. Well, I'm not sure you can see Derek Wraith, because I think the inflictor and the smoke cloud are blocking line of sight, but Oh, yes. yeah, yeah. That, yeah, no, yeah. I, well, there's a little, I think there's a space in between the, the Wraith engine, the smoke cloud, and, and something over there. Mm -hmm. Did you just give me the, goal, the good old mm-hmm? Mm -hmm. The Pagani mm-hmm? Mm -hmm. What is the Pagani mm-hmm? It's like the Pagani sure. Sure. <laughs> yep, there you go. <laughs> Those of you, if you spend any time talking to Pagani, you will learn the mannerisms. The, mm -hmm. the mannerisms. I oh, like yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that I mean, <laughs> there you I, have go. Played, I have played entirely too many years of uh, Collectible games, card games? Collectible card games, War Machine, right, where whenever you're trying to be as clean as possible, you're always accepting, like, yes, I agree with what you're saying. You mean passing kind of priority by saying sure. Uh, sure. <laughs> See, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, it's just thoroughly ingrained in me. Uh, to acknowledge statements that are directed at me that, yes, I have heard you, and yes, uh, that, is, that is something that I agree with. That's right. P P uh, Plummer, Michael Plummer, uh, mm -hmm. his, his way of saying it is great. Like, he doesn't say sure, he says great. It looks like Hero's Tragedy, which just went up on the fin blades. That will knock down any of the Banes to kill them. Yep, and the Solo walked up next to that flag. It's a little hard to see from the top-down view, but yes. he is facing the flag and then gave them Hero's Tragedy. So we are basing this guy up here. Yep. <laughs> I'm kind of interested to see if this is a viable charge for this Wraith engine. <laughs> like, oh. like, can he make it that oh, far? Oh, that would be succulent. Which I'm not sure he can. But if he can, uh, I think this bomber goes to Frown Town. <laughs> I the, think... Uh, takes the express straight down to Frown Town. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think uh, this little stalker is probably not going to commit next turn. I think this guy... 
this Wraith engine, maybe there's going to be some like Bay Knights come up here and clear out a couple of these, and then our Wraith engine ends up here somewhere. Uh, kills a whole bunch of these Fin Blades. We'll be plus five armor. That's going to be real hard for this guy to deal with in combat, especially if Madrak uh, committed this way, which he did, uh, which means there will not be a rage for this guy next turn. Yep. So I think uh, this, this positional movement to here really lets Aaron be aggressive with this Wraith engine. Now, I have not caught if Madrak feed it or not. It looks like I see that big token. Uh, so this right here looks like a proxy base to me. Oh, is that a proxy base? Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. This isn't Madrak right here. That's the fell caller. It looks like this is Madrak right here. Oh, Madrak is advancing to where that, that proxy token is. Okay, yeah. so that's, that's good. That's good, right? Because now we do have this rage is available, like walk five, range six. So if this guy doesn't die next turn, he'll have access to this Mauler's Animus Rage, which is plus three strength. Okay, so Madrak did just feet. He's got confirmation. Feet and even ground are going up. Yeah. Uh, so I think this is a great play from Tim right here. I was, I was worried when I thought he was kind of skewing up here uh, because that, that cuts this off. He's going three into the stone, and he is sitting, sitting pretty right here with nothing up. Yep. So I think that's uh, kind of terrifying. This stalker wasn't measured. Uh, I think it's got a 13-inch threat. Madrak is in this zone. So if this is less than an inch, this stalker might yeah. be able to get to a naked Madrak. Real fast, for those of you that are watching that are not necessarily familiar with you know, some of the, the more intricate changes, you know, Madrak 1 went through a major change post-CID. And let's talk to you real fast about what his new feat says, because it's different than what you're used to. His new feat says, remove D3 plus 3 damage points from friendly faction models currently in his control range. Right now, that part is not relevant. Uh, because nothing's damaged. The second part, which is more relevant, is while in Madrak's control range, friendly faction models cannot be charged or slam power attacked. And the feat, Grim Determination, lasts for one round. So basically, everybody inside his control range, which there is a Rune Bearer in this list, the Rune Bearer picked up Arcane Repeater, which means that his control area is extended by two inches. So this is a 12 inch control area instead of the 10 you might be used to with on Magic 1. Uh, everybody within 12 inches can't be charged or slammed. And that is a really amazing and powerful defensive feat. You know, I'm a huge fan of Rask with my Gators, and Rask is a very similar feat with a very strong melee force of shutting down charges, so I know how powerful this can be. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in this. I'm interested in this. Is this 13 inches? <laughs> Might be. Because if it is, I think Madrak just dies right here. <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> and, yeah, like, there's not even anything in the way. <laughs> so, I, I this could be a very short game. <clears throat> right, so, so we don't walked up and use Spirit Chaser, so that, uh, that stops any incorporeal. I'm I'm worried. I mean, this could be really exciting. And the uh, the stalkers do have pathfinders, so they can just wander on over through there. All right, stone awaken the stone. Back up to full. Turn passes back, and we see. He just checked it. He checked it. This I mean, if he starts going real quick, we know it's in. I, I, don't think you, I don't think you do anything. Like, you take that chance. If it's in, you're going for it, right? Yep. Like, you're going to feed on him. You're going to give him dark guidance. He's going to get up there. Uh, and I think if that's in, it's probably got a really good chance of killing Madrak. Uh, but if it doesn't, like if you, you botch the dice rolls or anything like that happens, uh, it's fine. Like, you lost a stalker. And he still has to kill the stalker that's now engaged with Madrak, who's probably really low. So, yeah. like, I'm, I'm not too worried about it. <clears throat> yep, yep. So I, I mentioned this Wraith Engine charge earlier where he could get in here. Uh, this, this guy is not inside of the feet. So mm. that, that's how that, that charge could happen. He might not have line of sight. Uh, this looks a little shaky as a line of sight. And I think they're playing this whole template. Uh, as the obstruction, so yeah, he can't are. draw it this way. They are. So he probably doesn't have line of sight to this little drummer back here, but it's an interesting idea. All right, let's. Uh, Aaron is at the beginning of his turn, he's still in his maintenance phase, or actually, sorry, he's in a control phase now because he's allocating his focus. Yep. And let's see, I mean, we'll be able to know very early, based on how he allocates his focus, what his plan is. I want to see him go for it. 
I do too. That's all I want to see happen right now. I do now. too. And I think this is like super duper incredibly good odds, right? Like if, if he can get there. So I don't know if this guy's within 13 or not. I don't know. The fact that Aaron's not just snap doing it makes me think it's not. But you can run this Wraith engine over to here, engage him from two inches, and your little stalker can walk up and hop into this hole. This right there. Easy peasy. Yeah. You get your Dark Shroud. You got your Pound 19 stalker. He's Matt 7 boosted to hit from Dark Guidance. He can hop. He'll get four attacks. Should easily kill a naked Madrak. No problem. So the fact that he's not just snap going for it makes me believe it's not in. Well, I don't know. When Even when in Doyle's game with Aaron, when there was a naked Magnus next to a, a stalker, Aaron really set up and took his time in doing what was a, a quite simple and rudimentary uh, execution of Magnus. Sure. Uh, looks like we're past, active, or past allocation, and I'm not sure that stalker got any focus, so I'm guessing he's out of range. Yep. All right. Bands are charging in. Well, no, they're just advancing, yeah? They can't charge. Bands are walking in. Yeah, because <laughs> Madrex feeds up. Yep. Actually, I think they're running. At least that guy ran, which means the whole unit's running because they can't charge. So this to me kind of looks like a... I'm interested to see what Aaron does this turn. Yeah. Because I do think Tim is, has committed really hard to that north half of the map. And at the moment, he's not getting anything for it, right? <laughs> like, sure. Like Aaron could just be like, nah. I'm going to back up <laughs> and just go stand behind his clouds. And then Tim has to spend an entire another turn of of. And of this dealing. is the first turn that scoring is available. Yes. Bottom around two. Yep. Yep. So I think you could probably see like a single Bane warrior go run into that zone or something. Just kind of hang out. Here. Uh, contest that zone up. Make sure Tim doesn't score on his own turn or score on your turn. Whenever your opponent can score points on your turn. It's the worst. It is the worst. That yeah. is how you lose on scenario at an alarming rate. <laughs> Man, I keep trying to put my like le prop my feet up so I can just get comfortable and watch the game because I'm just enjoying watching it. And uh, all that happens is just wires everywhere, and then my screen oh. went black. Welcome to the stream booth. And now my screen just says HDMI no signal. Well, it's a good thing that all those wires weren't important. Yeah, I'm very proud of you. That's today. okay. I can look at your screen. Oh, yes. I. I was just I was just trying to trying to get comfortable. That's all, and I'm breaking the stream on my end. Mm -hmm. But Tony, our video producer, is a magic man, and he fixed it for me. All right, I'm gonna get comfortable this way now. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. You're an animal. Do you want to know if this Wraith engine is going to attack? No, I think it's just moving up. Oh, no, that was the apparition, yeah. They're talking about formation here. Those back two Bane Knights are out of formation here. Which, which doesn't seem like a super relevant thing at the moment. <laughs> if that leader doesn't die, something's gone horribly wrong in Tim's turn. Yeah. <laughs> so. <clears throat> you can see the Afflictor just advances up into that cloud. Yep, um, just into the cloud. We got a lot of uh, a lot of wall going on here, so these guys are going to be pretty safe from the fin blades. Uh, this inflictor is pretty tanky. It's got a shield there, so it's arm nineteen. Yep, uh, that, that amazing shield guard, of course, for when you happen to need it. Though there's only a limited amount of attack uh, range attacks, but they are significant. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So I think he's. I mean, you I don't want you don't want to throw in wrath rock or a bomb hitting you at the wrong time. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. Yeah, so they're checking the, the run range there to make sure that he's going to get in the zone. He is indeed going to get into the zone. Okay. 
Runs so that's great. That's that contest we were talking about. Yep. Um, so I, I don't think too many of these bands are really going to be committed here. So there's just going to a couple of them are going to go out there. I'm going to bet the unit leader is going to walk out there. Right. Which is, keep formation. Which right. is a little sad. Keep formation on everybody, and the rest of this unit's going to hide back in the back. Would be my guess. Uh, we do have a question in chat from Jeff. How much did the Risen counter finish at yesterday? It actually only made it to 15. Yep. I was very sad. I feel like it could have been an easily a 30 or 40 game, but it only went to 15. It only went to 15. Well, that's because Alexia went down. Alexia got punched directly in her nugget, and she did. given the amount of damage that was happening, uh, Corey decided to let her die instead of trying to kill all the Risen. Well, I do think Corey kind of was going for a... Um, a time play. So I think keeping the Risen in line uh, is, is very good. Uh, so Warren's trying to stay within three inches of that Long Rider to make sure that he cannot get an impact attack on that Bane. Smart, smart, smart. And he's moving on up here. So yeah. I think he's planning on a sort of just giving away a couple of these Banes to make sure... Uh, that he doesn't lose a whole ton of his unit here and doesn't seed any scenario points at all. Yep, just doing a little bit of basically peace trading, right? Give up yep. these guys and then I'll be able to counterattack you with Banes. Yep. Your feet won't be up. Make Although these the champions come over the wall as well, I think is important. Yep. Another Wraith engine just advanced, being very, very cautious. Yeah, checking some threat ranges there and making sure he doesn't lose his incorporeal. It's very, very important to not do that. To not get within 11 inches of the stone. Oh, so he, he is declaring that he is within 11 and he is no longer incorporeal. And there we go. Wraith engines are outside of the charge range of all these champions. <laughs> Looks like it's just going to be Finblades coming in. Um, mm -hmm. Also looks like we're not going to have any CP scoring at the end of this turn. I think everything should be contested. It does look like that. Uh, ex unless Aaron commits a solo over to his flag, uh, which I'm not sure there is a solo even over there. I thought he measured the four inches to the long rider over there. Ah, you're right. Contesting. You're right. The long rider is contesting. So everything will be, everything will be contested. We're staying outside of the threat range of these uh, these champions with this stalker, and I think this uh, <clears throat> I, I think these stalkers are going to be be key here. I think they're going to be able to sort of push back Madrak constantly, yeah. not let him be as aggressive. Though as Though it wants can stay to honest, be. right? Like you have to play an honest game when they're there. Yep. You can't get too aggro <clears throat> and and play them too forward. Not that you necessarily want to. And I guess a force like this. Well, I think Madrak's one of those casters that really likes to move up the board throughout the game because he can do a lot of work himself if he needs to. Yeah. Uh, he can do a lot of damage. His axe is a great ranged attack, right? He's a decent bully. I mean, he's not like a Barnabas 2, Chromac 2 level bully. But yes, by keeping it honest and keeping it back, you are reducing the effectiveness of things like, you know, we mentioned throwing Wrathrock earlier. That mm -hmm. probably just won't come in. Yeah, I don't think the Blood Boon's going to be too relevant, but... <laughs> um, it's still just a high pow attack, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's just a f it's another attack you can make that's boostable if necessary. So what the judge is checking here is can you stay outside of the throw range of the champion and be inside the zone of 12 inches, which is difficult because of that forest template right there uh, to measure, but he is indeed in the zone and outside of threat range of the champion. Now, uh, Rex for the win in Twitch chat, who is often mm -hmm. the one posting up Pagani uh, emoticons yep. and, and ye yelling your name in all caps, mentions that it's been uh, 40 minutes and nothing has died yet. Uh, that is coming very, very, okay. very when, soon. When it happens, it will happen very fast. Yep. <clears throat> the first two rounds, especially with a big defensive feat like Magic One saying that uh, Aaron could not charge, this was a big dance, a big jockeying game. Mm -hmm. But the dance is about to uh, end, and everyone's about to get punched right in the mouth. Yes. So when you have these control-style feats, uh, using them early like this, you have to get something out of this, Correct. right? Like, and I don't think Tim has really gotten very much out of this. And let's let's talk about what Tim is going to get out of this, right? 
There's uh, there's at least two Bane Knights right here. They're they're dead, right? Like those things are dead. <laughs> uh, these two Bane Knights probably also dead. Yep. Uh, assuming the Krill Stone comes this direction, uh, which I think Aaron is kind of baiting it to try and get the Incorporeal off of these two models, uh, is going to leave these guys without a stone. Or it'll be a stretch, right? They'll be here, and then you'll get a couple of the guys there. Uh, that's probably fine for Tim. I don't think Tim is too upset about that. But I think this is definitely a bait down this direction for the Krill Stone. Uh, we'll get a couple fin blades here. We'll get a couple fin blades here. We intentionally didn't kill any of these fin blades from Aaron uh, mm -hmm. so that... There's no vengeance, right? So, so we don't want vengeance going down anywhere on that. Um, so I think we're going to lose a couple of these guys. We're going to lose a couple of these guys. These guys are probably dead. Probably this guy. Probably him. Probably him. I'm not actually sure what that is. <laughs> like, what is that? <laughs> I don't know. It seems a little far out there. It's probably not a Bane. That's, that, I mean, that could be control range. That could be command range. <laughs> we'll I don't see. actually know. Uh, Tim just makes a comment, and now we get to play the game. Yep. So, uh, which I think is completely fair. Like, Tim used his feet to buy this board position. Mm -hmm. uh, and and now, now let's see what he can do with it. Fighting starts. Right? So I think we're going to see some of these guys die. These guys die. So for Rex and the others in, 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 in chat that you were saying, it, it, there hasn't been a lot of fighting yet, uh, as we just explained. Here it comes. And I, Tim, the one of the players at the table, absolutely agrees with you. Also, Rex just posted a, uh, a wedding cake for me. Uh, and I appreciate that in Twitch chat. Thanks, oh. Rex. That's a beautiful donger holding that wedding cake, too. In indeed. That's beautiful. Rex is our, our resident donger captain when it comes to Twitch streaming. The adorable little faces are just fantastic. So in, in my mind, and I, I just did a little bit of analysis on this, and I haven't uh, ever played this matchup, obviously, but yeah. I, I'm going to bet that Madrak did not get enough work out of his feet okay. for this to be worth it. Uh, you don't think, think that buying a full turn of basically positioning with zero to little retaliation? Yeah, I don't, I don't think that was enough. Okay. Like, I think Tim was worried about giving up that flag uh, a little too much. Okay. I think I would have probably given, given Aaron the flag and go for that. Um, I just, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure he got enough out of this for, for this to be a really good thing here. Uh, S Snarky in uh, Twitch says, is there any chance we can get an update on how the other game is going? We're both tethered to the commentary table right now, but if I can get word out to somebody to find out how the other table is doing or when that game ends, who the winner is, we will announce that on this live stream if that becomes available. No guarantees we'll have that information, but we'll try and get it for you. <coughs> so here we see the long riders are activating. Mean Remember, no vengeance was triggered because none of the fin blades actually got hurt last turn, so we're just going through a straight yep. activation. All right, here come the Long Riders starting their attacks. You can see Tim's dice cam there. This is Band of Heroes, so you're not going to see any tough. That Band of Heroes ability is phenomenal, by the way. It's such a strong Theme Force ability. Yes. Okay. So all those Bane Warriors that just went down to the Long Riders are RFP'd because of the Man to Heroes theme force, which is, again, very, very strong. Yeah, which is going to remove the, the uh, Voidbringer mini feat. Okay. We have a very quick update, and that being the top of round three is the current status of the Jeff Pat game. The control point score is Jeff zero CP's Pat one CP. Uh, so it's very still early in their game. I mean, we're looking at the top of three at our game. We're streaming right now. So anything can still happen in Jeff and Pat's game. If we get more information or we get an announced winner, we will let you know. So we just picked up a couple of Banes, four or five there. Um, and I was kind of talking about the value that you have to get out of this feed, right? Yeah. So he's picked up four or five banes. So he'll probably pick up, um, I guess there's probably three more. Uh, three more in this next turn by those champions. Or Fell Caller is going to come on up. Going to shout real loud and break some dudes uh, in half. Yeah. Uh, looks like he's only getting two banes, no matter where he goes here. Was that your shouting noise? Yeah. It's like Tarzan. I've had a lot of people asking me here at the show to make the T-Rex noise I made on the, the keynote. Yeah? It's been really strange. Yep. You started it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not ashamed of what I've done. Never. Um, 
So yeah, I don't think a whole lot more of these Banes are going to die. Maybe these four right here, right? Like, well, like the, ones if the, the ones at the bottom we already pointed out, right? Yeah, so like if this Velcaller can kill those two or maybe these two with the spray, and then the champions can kill this guy and this guy. I don't see, I don't see any of these dying. Uh, these two Stalkers, I think, are going to be huge problems for these champions. So like if these champions commit up, these Stalkers are just going to go to town. They're going to walk, they're going to hop into the back arc. They're going to murder a lot Would of Would you say that they're going to take the champions on a direct express bullet train to Frown Town? <laughs> Probably, yeah. Okay. Not as Frown Town as this bomber would have been if this guy could charge. <laughs> True. <laughs> but still Frown Town. Um, so at the moment, we're looking at like six Banes. This down here is, is I don't think, great <laughs> for, for Tim. <laughs> like, he's going to kill a bunch of these Bane Knights, but I don't think Aaron's particularly worried about that. Yeah. I don't think those Bane Knights are really part of what uh, Aaron's game plan is down there. I think this is going to be mostly a Wraith Engine party. Uh, Wraith Engine party? It's kind of like Carnadon. Is it like Carnadon party? But, uh, but not. <laughs> but, yeah. <clears throat> so while they're doing some quick measurement, and I'm going to make this a super fast topic, are you sure. excited to see some Monpok streaming in the future? God, I really am. Like, I yeah. really, really enjoy Monpok, and... I've always loved Monpok, like from yeah. way, way, way back when it came out. But I think some Monster Apocalypse streaming in the future will be a very fun thing to add. Yep. All <laughs> right. So we're seeing the Fell Caller advance to the, where the proxy's standing. Mm -hmm. And probably just going to spray those two guys, as we mentioned. Yep. Let's see which call he uses. I imagine Pathfinder, yeah? On the yeah. champs? Uh, oh, no, wait. There's a in Blades. There? There is a Scaldi in there, yeah. Okay, I didn't catch him. Yeah, so he doesn't need to really do it. So Warcry goes on the Fin Blades. So he's spraying those two front Bane Thralls there, and then he's got the Warcry down on the Fin Blades. Misses the first one. That's unfortunate. Misses both. Misses both. Wow. So. Wow. That's unlucky. <laughs> yes, chat. We were talking about Mon Poc, Monster Apocalypse Twitch uh, streaming later. Not uh, Somebody misheard it as Mod Podge. Would you like to stream some Mod Podge? I would love to, thank you. Yes. That sounds delicious. It sounds like a scrapbooking activity. Tim's in the bank Do, right now. Don't you talk about Chuck Dogwood in here. Listen, I, we're don't streaming, you, the, we're streaming the Iron Gauntlet. I'm not going to talk about Chuck Dogwood <laughs> today. I saved that for the weekly streams, y'all. So wait till the next weekly rumble. We'll talk more about Chuck Dogwood. I try to keep things mostly on topic during Iron Gauntlet streams. I will turn this stream around. <laughs> yeah. So we've got a little bit of the tank going on here. After a failed fell collar spray there, how do you recover? What are we doing here? Well, <clears throat> he's already done the long riders. He's already did the fell collar. Yes. I don't have an exact count of what. So the champions are all blocked up behind the wall, yeah? Yeah, give, so me that, give me that top-down view so I can see what resources are available and what the positioning is. So sort of by looking at these two banes, right? Uh, positioning them so close to this wall yeah. left no room for these champions right. uh, on this side of the wall, right? So if these champions have to come around to the side, that's going to expose them to these banes. Yeah. If they have to come around this side, that's going to expose them to all this stuff right here. Whereas if they could happily sit behind the wall, yeah. they'd love it. Uh, if they could come over the wall here, they could still stay in their tight little pack, and okay. you could you put, want, like... You, you want to know my answer is? Sure. I have Madrek move within 12, Far Strike himself, and Ricochet uh, a shot and boost, taking him out. That to, one and that one. To try get to some, get those two there? Get some work done with him. Yeah, I yeah, think I that's think possible. I think your plan went wrong with the fell Caller, and you've got to call an audible. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And we saw, we saw some audibles going down in our previous games, uh, and sometimes when players' plans do go wrong, uh, they make significantly less than optimal decisions, mm -hmm. I will say that. <clears throat> uh, and we saw like a commitment of an Ion on Holt into a Carapace Slayer. Mm -hmm. Like that, I think, was a super overcommitment. I think a Madrak play right here is probably fine. Yeah. I don't think you're particularly in danger of, uh, of dying. Like we've got our 13-inch 13 13-inch 13 measurement right here. We're staying as absolutely 13 or more inches away from both of these stalkers yep. uh, to make sure that they don't just instantly kill Madrak, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I think, I think using a Madrak, uh, coming back here, sort of throwing this axe here, throwing this axe here for your second attack granted by, uh, by okay. Ricochet there, you can take care of those two Banes, and then that gets you this value out of these, these champions. But right, so the Rune Bear just went here, Harmonious, Madrak, Madrak activates, moves to where the proxy is, which is outside the stalker range, like you said, and yep. now let's see what Tim decides to do with Madrak. 
Confirming against outside 13, the Stalker. He yes. is casting Snipe. Oh, ca Ooh, maybe you called it right, boy. And look at that. He's going to he snipe himself, and he's, he's going to boost a shot into the Bane behind the wall. We got an 11. He's got to hit the second 10. Oh, here we go. So we got our one Bane that we can bring back oh, it looks now. Like he's ricocheting not to the one on the wall, but the one uh, back in the field. Hmm. So a little bit off from what I was thinking. That does seem interesting. I maybe he doesn't want to commit his uh, he doesn't want to commit his his champions just yet. This yeah. is this is real slow roll of a game right here. Yeah. Like he's and note that the man. ricochet the ricochet attack did miss uh, against yes. the guy that was out in the field. Yes, he didn't boost it. Uh, didn't need much to hit though. He did six. Yeah, not 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 much. Got rolled a three though. We do have a guided hand onto the champions, so they're going they're going somewhere. They're doing something. Jeff is asking for both of us to be doing commentary in the finals. Jeff, uh, the final commentary will be Pagani and Schick. I will be judging that table. So myself and Travis will be at that table judging. Um, but you will have Pagani and Schick as your commentators for the winner of this match versus the winner of the uh, Pat Dunford-Jeff Everett match. Mm -hmm. All right. Champions so, are coming out. Yep. Champions are charging. They've got the Relentless from uh, Scaldi. Chat is all saying winner of this match versus Pat. Hey, be careful. Never count right. Jeff out. Yeah. Jeff is a Jeff is a wily one. He's been doing pulling out a lot of games. And uh, he's playing a pretty weird list. So... <laughs> I uh, I wouldn't count him out just yet. So we are figuring out our champion charges here. So we're checking to make sure that there's a tactician going here. Yep. Doing a couple quick measurements here. Yeah, that, that does look like he's out. Uh, there's been a couple questions from Brush Truer and a few of the other uh, people in ch chat asking if they tr trust Schick to do commentary, if he has calmed down since Primecast. The answer is he has not. He's actually been doing more donuts. Be ready. <laughs> yes. Shik and I always get pretty hype in our, our cast as well. Well, he's high on donuts. Can, can I get some of those donuts? <laughs> if you want them. I do. They're highly addictive and toxic. Mmm, toxic donuts. So here we go. Our, uh, our sorcerers here, they gave him magic weapons, okay. and they're doing a, uh, a razor window there, so they're picking up. Yep. They're picking up a bane. So, so this is the distance that I'm interested in right here. Is this overtake in? I think the players agree that it is. Uh, if this guy dies, it's going to be real sad because then he doesn't get to Voidbringer. He doesn't bring, get to bring back a couple of the Banes that have died from ranged attacks. Yes. So uh, that would be really sad to me. Yeah. And I think if this goes well for Tim here, uh, he's he's probably secured this top area, which which I thought was going to be very difficult. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm interested to see exactly how this goes. Do these guys hit all their attacks? Do they do all that kind of stuff, right? So well, we're going to see how it plays out right now. We are indeed. It's going to come down uh, to some very key die rolls. However, I do feel a lot of these champions are going to get absolutely murdered in the next turn by a Wraith Engine and some Stalkers and Tartarus and like all that kind of stuff going yep. on. So uh, do not feel I do not feel like this is going to be without retaliation. Yep. <laughs> Extreme retaliation here. I would so. agree with your assessment 100%. There okay. we go. Hit, no tough. Yep. That Band of Heroes theme force ability, benefit. He will choose to not remove him from play, and therefore he will get his overtake. Correct. Right. 
All right. So the charge attack up in the cloud hits. Same thing. He will not RFP him, but he is going to overtake. And looks like he is in on the uh, yep. officer. Looks like the players have agreed that he is in. He hits him. He's a pot 12 weapon master, so yep. he's got to roll an 8 here. Ooh. That's enough. Uh, that guy is RFP'd. Yep. And that's, and, but that's, now that he's dead, it, it is irrelevant now. Yeah, it's he was massive. The guy that that's massive. Back. So we're checking our two inches. Can we overtake and hit him? Looks like the answer is yes. Yep. So the Banes are just basically evaporating under the uh, champions. Yes. Yes, they are. Which I'm not sure Aaron is too upset about this, right? Like, I think he is going to get that extreme retaliation coming in here. So. I think he's got a couple Banes left. Those Banes will be able to apply some Dark Shroud up. You'll get some Dark Shroud from the Wraith engine. You'll get the Stalkers in there. I don't think any of this will be a real huge problem. Nope. Like, I, I don't think it's how he, Aaron wanted it to go. But, but I don't think he's it's, it's particularly mad no. that this went this way. Also, real fast, the paint job on uh, Banky's Trolls, phenomenal. Phenomenal. This looks amazing. I'm really glad we did that close-up shot because this looked really good. So Finblades are going to walk on up. They picked up a Hero's Tragedy from a uh, Stone Scribe Chronicler, which, by the way, is probably my favorite Trolls model. I think it's, it's super underrated. All of its abilities that it's got are fantastic. Mm -hmm. It does so much work but between the Concealment, the Hero's Tragedy, the Charge of the Trolls. Charge of the Trolls, like yeah. I, I love all of these things. All right, we see the fin blades going in. We do have some people in chat talking about balanced charge and how the champions should only have Pathfinder on the charge. Mm. Uh, the players had agreed with all the measurements beforehand uh, that he could kill that guy, overtake, and get in there. So yep. we, don't, we don't have to worry about any of that. Our little drummer man hugging in the side there. Yep. Making sure he doesn't become a charge target for a Wraith engine. Remember, these are all war cried from earlier from the Fell Caller, so we're looking at yes. Mat 8. First Finblade Blade removes a guy. Looks like we're going to boop down a couple more of these Bane Knights. I think these Wraith engines are going to do a lot of work this next turn, and they are going to make some machine race. <laughs> so. I'm curious about chats are talking about Pathfinder on the charge. Uh, what is the, the point of contention chat has at the moment? Because that zone over there, I believe, was a cloud zone they were standing in. Which I, I mean, it, it may have been. I don't know. Which, which is not rough terrain. So you can they, never know they, what chat they, is doing. They had, uh, he had Relentless to charge across the wall. But the overtakes were not affected by any rough terrain because that little circular, perfectly circular zone there should have been a cloud. No, it's not a hill. Yeah, Chad thinks that little circular zone is a hill. That was a cloud, everybody. They had uh, two cloud templates in it. They took them off. And charging over the wall would have been fine, Chad, because they have a relentless. Just making sure, trying to clear things up for everybody. Yep. And once again, we only lost a couple of Bane Knights there, right? Like four or five, maybe. I, I'm not too worried about, about this side at the moment. Yeah. We just want to make sure everybody is being able to follow the action. And yeah, they, a lot of the terrain templates have forest and clouds and so on that were placed in them, and the players have removed them so you can see where their players are. So at the moment, it is there, there are a couple pieces that can see where people would be confused, and that's why we're trying to clear things up on what was what. Drillstone wandering on up here. Let's see what uh, <clears throat> let's see what kind of uh, aura it's going to use here. 
Tim is trying to make sure that the stalker can't get to that krill stone because that's yep. not a that's not what you want. It'll take down that aura very very quickly. So he's making sure that the stalker can't quite fit there. Yep, Wendy Sales is saying some of the, the terrain bases are hard to tell what they are after the pieces are being removed. And that's our job to inform everybody of what they are. Right now, while you're wondering, they're walking into a forest inside the zone. That's why those models are moving at half speed. So we did do Spirit Chaser, so there is no incorporeal around that stone. Our bomber's activating here. He's probably going to try and ding up this, uh, this big Wraith engine over here. Yep. And there is a uh, there is an Ecrotech hiding back there, so we can just kind of and put it back together. I'm sorry, so you can what? Weir, weir. Mm, got it. That's the sound wrenches make. We've got our first hit there. We're boosting up our damage. Minus four, rolls a four, like a boss, will do no damage. Uh, Atlas ST is pointing out that the one of the Trollkin sorcerers has a blank spell sheet. Oh, maybe he's gonna write something new on it. Yeah. Yeah, he's gotta write uh he's gotta write his tournament victories on there. Yeah. So the first one got full, so we had to paint a second one up. Every caster that he has personally killed. <clears throat> So it looks like we also missed our second attack there. Oh, man. And no damage to the Wraith engine, which would caught on the blast. All right. We see the Mauler. Looks like he's just backing up, right? <laughs> well, I think he wants to stay back there, and I think he wants to score that zone. Yeah, and also stay out of stalker range. Yeah, so he's staying in a stalker range. He's staying out of... Okay, so he is staying inside the Wraith Engine range, but outside of the stalker range. And Tim will score two. One for the flag, one for the zone. Yep. So Tim um, goes to two CPs. Aaron stays at zero. Yeah. I think Aaron's going to have a pretty easy uh, chance to respond here. I mm -hmm. think the Bane Knights will clear out most of its own zone. Uh, I think their last remaining Banes and a couple of those solos over there and maybe a stalker will end up clearing out uh, his flag. Yep. I think it's pretty unlikely that Aaron doesn't score at least one this turn, uh, maybe even scoring two back in retaliation. And this is, I think, Aaron's big turn. I think he's going to feed this turn. I think he's going to get in there. Um, I'm, I'm always interested with how Line of Sight ends up working with these things, but, like, there's a Krillstone here, there's a Felcaller, there's all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we can kill this guy, we can kill this guy, and then this Wraith Engine can charge targeting this guy. Well, don't forget that there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a big here. forest right there. Sure, yeah, yeah. So you've got this. Uh, I guess he's not incorporeal, so it might be a distance issue. But like, if he can charge in here and he can get this kind of stuff. So so I, I think this Wraith Engine could jam in there. Though, really, I think he's just going up here. Yeah. Like, let's be honest here. Let's, we don't have to get anything where fancy. Real, real fast, let's just point out where the, the, the forest is for everybody. So we've got yeah, a, a, so we've got this one right here. We've got, and then we've got this one right here. Yep. That back uh, there. And then we got this forest. guy. Whoa. <laughs> That's so crazy. Yeah. Yeah, so those are our three forests yeah. going on there. In that upper left corner, the one with the lighter, the yeah, lighter this blocking, is a That's a cloud. <laughs> yeah, and right now the uh, the engine has no pathfinder and no corporeal. Yes. So I don't think it can it's in a it's in a forest. I think it can get over here though. Yeah, but how many inches does it lose in the forest it's in right now? Sure. Well, it's probably it probably charges five inches would be my guess. So we can get to there. Probably engage that guy and that guy. Maybe would be Maybe. my guess. Scar's feeding. Yep. Let's figure out how many she's feeding for. Okay. Looks like he's feeding for seven. Looks like he picked Tartarus. I'm sorry, not Tartarus. Yes, picked Tartarus. 
the two stalkers in that nor the, the woods right next to that Wraith engine, both Wraith engines, the Inflictor and Derg Wraith. So yeah. it looks like we got, what is it, both Wraith engines, both, both stalkers, Derek Wraith. It was Derek Wraith, the Inflictor, both Wraith engines, both stalkers, and Tartarus. And Tartarus, okay. And yeah, clock is always something that I'm going to be talking about here. Tim Banky is down past that 20-minute mark. Yep. Uh, if you remember the last game that I streamed with you, uh, or last game that I streamed, which was last night, uh, is, is pretty crazy when you get below 20 minutes. That's yep. always when my heart starts beating, and I'm like, oh, man, I'm running out of time here. When we get sub five minutes, that's when you get crazy wacky Pagani that suggests running your caster at people. Yep. So. I think All Dark right. Guidance was also cast by uh, Scar. Yes, I would imagine so. The Stalkers are coming in. So Krillstone Grunt 1's going to die. I'm guessing this Fell Caller's going next. We're buying up a couple attacks here. Did four damage on the first hit there. And he takes him out. He's got Grievous Wounds, so no tough. Yep. And the Fell Caller goes down. Does. I think that's a really big deal here because that war cry for plus two mat. It's big. It's Especially with, mean, the it's with the Stalkers. Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. Because right? they're deaf like, a million. Like the, the Scarfy does get plus five armor, which is great. Uh, but Stalkers are really working on their defense the, yes. here, right? So I, I think, uh, and this repair I think is super relevant. Stalkers don't have very many boxes. So like every little box that you can repair is just worth so much. Yep. Agreed. Oh, he's coming in. Ooh. He's hopping on over. He's getting in on the Krillstone. Swiggity swooty. Coming for that Krillstone? He's coming for that Krillstone. Oh, my. So when he kills the Krillstone, mm -hmm. um, the aura goes away, but the fury remains, and the stone field promotes. Yep. <laughs> All right. So the Stalker jumps in, under Scar's feet, and just murders basically all but the stone in the UA. Yes. We're checking some wording on Spirit Chaser here, which I'm going to look up at the same time they do. Yes, so the, there's a discussion going on right now. So what's happened? Yep. Uh, the right engines have lost in Corporeal, and they don't gain it again until they activate. Mm -hmm. So once they activate, they will become incorporeal again. Yep. And Hold on. We will also double check here. Oh, I, I have checked. Oh, yeah. In my brain hole. Uh... Yep, they get it back at the start of their next activation. Yep. So now that the aura is gone, when the Wraith Engines, even though they are not currently incorporeal, when they activate, they become incorporeal. And that's what the players are, the players are confirming yes. right now, is that until he activates, he is still corporeal. And he's coming over here to deal with some of these champions. Which, uh, non-charging champions, they're not very happy. No. Like, those are not happy people. So, yeah. like, the fact that this Wraith Engine can get in there and can engage three or four of these and then probably only get charged by, like, two or three in return, it's probably going to be fine. Uh, the Mauler, I'm a little, little worried about for him. We're going to see if we can't get an update on the uh, Pat Dunford-Jeff Everett game from anybody who could possibly get that for us and let you all know, Chad, how that game is going. Oh, he missed his first attack needing a nine. 
Missed his second attack as well. Oh, no. These that's are very pal, sad. pal 22s. <laughs> yeah, that's really rough. And then you roll Snake Eyes on the damage at dice plus two to only do eight, or dice plus six to only do eight damage. That is very sad. That was uh, some very unlucky rolling. Very, very poor rolls there. Uh, here comes a Tartarus, it looks like, though. It does indeed. Yeah, that's, that's really unfortunate for Aaron there. Yeah. So Wraith Engine missed his first attack, hit his second attack, and rolled the lowest possible damage roll. Oof. Tartarus is clocking in at POW 19. All right, so it looks like a tough and check Tim's for the guy let him die. He's going to take a tough check. He is a dead. First guy down. What that's going to do is it's going to break the defensive line, so yep. they no longer have plus two defense. And we're going to replace him with a machine with wraith. With a machine wraith. We are checking death toll on Tartarus to see if it's optional or not. He may have to replace a Bane instead of a machine wraith. So we cannot create a machine wraith because he has to add a bane. Yep. Which he apparently did not do. <laughs> All right. So the information I have right now is that it is the bottom of round four in Jeff Everett and Pat Dumford's game. Jeff Everett has two control points. Pat has one. Other than that, we have no other update on what is going on with that game right now. The second attack that did 14 damage got spread out amongst the champions. It does look like Aaron is trying to find a way to contest this zone. Looks like our flag is a little short there. Looks like Aaron's not particularly happy with how that all just went down. No. He really wanted to make that machinery to be able to contest. Yeah. The Inflictor's walking up. He's going to kill him some guys, which is going to unjam a lot of these uh, these Banes. So no tough there. Beggy declares vengeance, but I'm guessing there's not going to be a whole yeah, lot of Yeah, there's not going to be left. a ton of guys left to actually knock that out. <laughs> Uh, we do have some people in chat talking about how they think this is going to come to clock. I think that is an entire, like, that is, that is very possible here to me. Yep. That, that this is uh, something that is going to come down to clock here. This game is being played very, very closely, very, very calmly, and uh, I think that's going to, that could be an issue for these players. <laughs> Where they're, they're not moving fast enough in their decision making. And I think if uh, if one moved uh, faster in their decision making, that they could uh, pick up an advantage here. Yeah, agreed. So I always love these crazy wraith engine charges. Like, do you think this guy can make it through here and end up like here? <laughs> uh, yes. And then, like kill this guy. Yeah. Or, like, yeah. like, yeah. Just I don't know, man. I I love 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 these. Looks like Derek Wraith is coming in. Yeah, Derek Wraith is one of the models affected by feet. Yes, he is. Derek Wraith is an absolute monster. Yes. Ooh. Mouth attack? 
So I don't believe that was a charge. I think it was just an advance. No, he's just walking. Kills him. No tough check. Kills a guy. We can battle wizard if we want. Here we yeah, go. Here we go. He's doing a mortal fear off that battle wizard. We do have a tough there, so we do have one knockdown fin blade. Those of you just joining, you are watching the semifinal matchup of the Iron Gauntlet World Championship for War Machine and Hordes. This is Aaron Whaley versus Tim Banky. The other match that's not being streamed is Pat Dunford versus Jeff Everett. We will have the finals match directly following this one to announce and crown our 2018 World Champion of uh, War Machine and Hordes. With a giant steel gauntlet. And yeah. The Iron Gauntlet prize this year, instead of it being a trophy, is an actual wearable Iron Gauntlet. With a trophy stand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guess something you could put it on if you don't want to, you know, rock it in the house all the time. Or Tony, our producer, I don't know if that went out to stream or not, just asked, if once you got it, why would you ever take it off? Because I imagine showers get real awkward. I imagine going to the bathroom gets real awkward with an Iron Gauntlet on. So Derek Great to kill a model with Hero Strategy on it. So yep. he is now taking a little nap down there on the floor. Yep. But he's uh he's got Mortal Fear. He's got plus five armor. He's probably fine. It'll take a lot to kill that guy. Uh, our, our Bane Mysticism. Knights are going to be charging here. Sorry, Mysticism in Twitch chat asks, what are the factions on the other table? It is uh, Pat Dunford piloting Grimkin. Uh, he's playing Dreamer Dark Menagerie versus Jeff Everett piloting Mercenaries. He's playing Ostrom in the Irregulars. Looks like five of these Bay Knights got in there. So it looks like this is a non-charge attack from uh, going into, I can't see which model he's actually swinging at. Is it just a, a fin blade? All right, that guy was knocked down because he was out of control, and he will, will and become he a Wraith. A machine wraith. Yep. This hero's tragedy is going to do a whole lot of work. Yeah, it's, yes, it is. So first charge kills the fin blade, and the Bane Knight falls down. Yep. Seeing more... Uh, game state. So we do hit the uh, we do hit the knockdown and we do uh, get the the tough there. Or sorry, we do we do hit we do kill. We hit the tough check. It's not knocked down because of uh, magic. Blade Wolf Nine in Twitch chat says none of his factions made it into the IG top four this year. That's okay. My nation didn't either. <laughs> The countries in the IG this year that made the top four were Canada, Canada, England, and Australia. No Americans. No Americans. Come on, America. Next time. What's being resolved right now is these Bay Knights are going to the Finblade unit. They're kind of hidden behind that piece of terrain the camera's on right now. And that unit has Hero's Tragedy on them. So for everyone that fails this tough roll and actually dies, a Bay Knight is then falling down in return. Yes. <clears throat> and I imagine this machine wraith here. We are checking the, some of these sweet, sweet machine wraith landing spots. And it looks a little tight. Looks like we're trying to get a Scarlock in here. All right. Looks like Machine Wraith charging in on the final fin blade. 
Hits under dark guidance. Tough check, and he's tough. A second tough check coming out of that guy. Well, it looks like or the Bane's Bane Thralls, the, uh, the Born and Warrior standard charge in on a uh, Long Rider? No, that's not a Long Rider. That's a champion. So the veteran leader from Tartarus does allow him to hit there. Ooh -wee. Just does a casual 11 damage from the standard bearer. Good job, Bane. Boink. And uh, that's inside a cloud, in case you're wondering what that piece of terrain is. They move the cloud template, so... That piece they Bane standard on is a cloud. The Scrap Thrall's going in for a death burst. <laughs> Just get him, little give him a big old hug. Does seven damage to that guy right there. Ouch. Yeah. Wait. Camera, I never noticed that on the, the wall that Danny built, there's a cat. Look yeah. right behind Scaldi. Yeah. Would you highlight that real fast on the Telestrator for yeah. anybody watching at home? <laughs> this is part of our terrain at the show, and I just, just now noticed the cat is just sitting there screaming at Scaldi. <laughs> is that a cat sound? Yeah, I've never seen a cat before in real life, so. Oh. That's what, that's what they sound like to me. I would do the T-Rex sound from the keynote, but rip headphone users, I won't do that uh, to you. Pretty much, yes. Uh, so with an overhead view, let's talk about this for just a moment here. Um, so it's looking like Tim is going to score this zone right here. Well, first off, let's... It's, uh, it's not the end of the round yet, oh, but it's no, looking no, like right now. I was just... Okay, no. Sorry, oh, for a second... something for, in chat? Sorry. No, no. For a second, I thought Aaron had... Uh, flipped over and I was like, wait, what? And I so, no, we're good, we're good. Keep going. Yeah, so so this zone right here is almost certainly going to get scored by Tim. I don't think Aaron has any way to get a model over there. Uh, after this guy activated, he couldn't quite run. Maybe he could have charged. I don't know. Made a machine rate. Seems pretty unlikely. Uh, but, so Tim's going to go up to three points here, which is really, really rough on Aaron, right? Because mm -hmm. he doesn't even have to do anything to get a fourth point in this zone. Yep. So then he's just got to clear his flag here to win the game. Uh, unless Aaron can score points back. Actually, no. So Aaron's going to score this. Uh, I believe. I think this Inflictor is towing it. Well, the Wraith Engine's there. Battle well, I scored. imagine he's not going to be there at the end of this. Oh, sure. So, I'm so <laughs> I imagine he's coming this way or he's going this way would be my guess. Because uh, we don't want to keep this Wraith Engine out of this fight for a whole other round. So hopefully Aaron can score this. And then that means Tim has to score three points. Uh, so it could be a one. It could be a two. And then I don't think there's a third point that Tim's really going to get. Unless something spicy happens over here on Aaron's flag. Sure. Uh, which seems pretty unlikely right now. I don't think there's even anything close close enough to get over there. Where is Scar at the moment? Is she uh, Scar the, is right here. Okay, she's between the force and the cloud. I thought that was her, yep. but I wanted to make sure. Right here, right here in the crevasse. Is she in the zone? Uh, probably. But I mean, I don't think it matters. I think this guy's in the zone anyway. So, uh, and this looks like a pretty great battle line that is formed here with Mortal Fear, right, and a bunch yeah. of feeded models. So I don't think any of Tim's models are getting in here. So I think if Tim doesn't win this turn on Scenario, yep. Aaron's going to start pulling ahead at an alarming rate on Scenario. We'll see. Uh, they'll both be scoring their zones basically every turn. Uh, Tim is losing this flank pretty hard right now. This is completely lost for Aaron, but there's no Tim models over here to score this flag. Yep. So he doesn't have to necessarily worry about it. He just has to make sure he doesn't get crushed by the models coming here. Uh, this machine or this this wraith engine is going to be fine. Oh, uh, Tartarus, I have less uh, less hope for. Let's so talk about the action that's actually happening right now. The wraith engine has done what you've been hoping it would do for quite some time. It's, so this was a run, I believe. I don't think this was a charge. Yep. Yes. Yeah, so that was a run. So we're not scoring here. So each player uh, we scores are scoring here. We are scoring here. So yep, each, each player is going to score one. Correct. Correct. Each player scores one. That puts Tim up to three and Aaron up to one. Yes. So for Tim to score this or to win this turn, he's got to get three points. Yep. Seems pretty unlikely. We've got a feeded, uh, like the score in the middle zone, 
basically impossible. Remember Scar's feet up is for everybody on yeah. it's on two stalkers, the inflictor, Derek Wraith, both Wraith engines, and Tartarus. Uh, Tartarus. They're yes. all plus five armor. So scoring this middle middle zone requires you to kill both stalkers. Yeah. Which seems really difficult right now. Yeah. It requires you to kill a Wraith engine with plus five armor, which yeah. seems really difficult right now. Uh, well, one of them's incorporeal with plus five armor. Sure, but I mean the one in the middle zone. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying but even even then the one on the bottom where the flag is yes. is incorporeal with with plus five armor. Yeah, so so this doesn't seem like anything that we're going to be able to score here. Um, this also doesn't seem like something that we're going to score. Correct. Like maybe a magical Christmas land, this little creel stone is like, I believe, <laughs> and then runs over here and makes it not incorporeal. And then this mauler is the champ, or this this bomber, I'm sorry, is the champion of its people. Yeah. And just goes total boss mode and kills this guy. Super, super unlikely to happen. I'm not even sure it's mathematically possible. Did you know, though, if you roll only sixes, though, anything can be real? Uh, it's not true. I have seen armor 47 terminuses walking around. Anything. No matter how many sixes you roll, you still can't kill that guy. You got to believe harder. Uh, so I think Aaron had an excellent response to Tim's feat. It was really unfortunate this guy missed two out of his three attacks. Sure, yeah, yeah. That was very, very sad. Um, but yeah, so I think uh, I think Aaron's in a pretty good spot right now. He's behind on scenario. I think it's been planned uh, to kind of be that way, like give up a little bit of pressure early, uh, not quite be as aggressive on his scoring, and then really push it home here in the end. Yep. Uh, excuse me for just a moment while I take a sip of this lovely water. Oh man. As soon as this is over, I'm going to run and grab me a Diet Coke and drink it so hard. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yep, so Tartarus is currently at armor 22. The Wraith engines are clocking in at 23 each. Yep. Uh, Derek Wraith is literally unkillable without he's not, the feet. He, he's knocked down, which he, helps. He is knocked down, that's true. You don't have to worry about the def, uh, I think, 14. Madrak is running his way as fast as he can from these two stalkers that he probably can't kill. I think Tim is severely on his back foot here. Yeah, it's pretty rough. But Tim Bengi is an amazing player, and you never know what he's going to pull out, right? That is very true. That is very true. These, these top-level players will always surprise us. Tim doesn't seem particularly happy with his current situation, which I think is accurate. <laughs> so there are a lot of these Bay Knights that are knocked down, however. So next turn, Aaron's not going to have nearly as good of a turn down here. Agreed. Blade Wolf says, I love the train for this year. Thanks. That's all Danny Samuels, our terrain makers. Made some really great pieces. Morn Wilk asks, what themes are they playing? Our Crix player here, Aaron Whaley, is playing Dark, Dark Host. Host. Uh, and Band and then, of Heroes for Tim yep, Banky. Tim Banky is playing Band of Heroes. With all of the champions and the long riders. And the fin blades and the Krillstone Bears and the Magic Ones. Yes. Yes, indeed. We do have the Spirit Chaser coming back out again, which will get yep. rid of Incorporeal. Hmm. Madrax walking back. Looks like he's going to try and get some ricochet action here. Oh, snap. He is living dangerously with those two stalkers hanging out there. Yep, he's going to cast Far Strike on himself. And looks like he's going to throw an axe. He hits the knockdown. He misses it. All right, looks like he hit a knockdown Bane. Failed yep. to kill, needing a six. Ricocheted into the other one. 
hit him. Looking for a six to kill the other knockdown Bane Knight. Needs a six. Oh, fails Tim. to kill him with Tim, a no. five on three dice. <laughs> Tim's dice have been a little rough this game. He has had some bad luck. But you know what? We hear Tim keep his composure. He says, that is not ideal, and he simply carries on. No fussing, no, no tilting, just goes about his business. Back to that hero's tragedy on those fin blades. It has been doing a lot of work. And again, we should commend the, the sportsmanship of all our top-level players, Aaron and Tim, and everyone we've seen in the Iron Gauntlet have been just uh, absolute gentlemen, professionals, wonderful sports. It's, just, it's been great. We've had some disputes. No one's gotten heated or angry. No. It's been great. Okay, so it looks like the champions are activating by the corporeal Wraith engine. Still under Car Scar's feet. Still armor the world. Got any hold it down for 30 seconds. I'm going to go take a look at the Dunford Everett table and see if I can get an update myself and just take a quick look at the table, see if I have anything to tell people of interest. Sure thing. You go for it. The last Bane Warrior is now down. We're overtaking an inch, kind of getting back in here. I don't have a lot of high hopes for how much these champions are going to do here. Uh, Tartarus is super tanky. It looks like they're just ignoring the Wraith engine at this point. So... Oh, with that spike there, we got two left. Scaldi is mat eight, so he picks up an attack there. Another sorry spike will kill Tartarus there. There you go. I still don't think Whaley is too upset about that. He lost Tartarus. Uh, it's sad, but it's not like All right. it's not a huge deal right now. I'm so. back. Didn't get a CP score because update because they're right in the middle of it. Jeff Everett's got seven minutes left. Uh, Dunford's got 17 minutes left. Sure. Dunford's got three cage ragers and the death knell and his skin mm -hmm. against what looks like a million forge guard. Okay. It's just a ton of infantry versus the beasts, and it's hard to tell if anyone has the advantage right now. Okay. And I think CP is a very important part of that picture as well. Yeah, which they were right in the middle of it, so it was not going to interrupt. Yep. So I think by crushing this entire flank a little too hard, mm -hmm. Tim was a little too conservative with these long riders. When they were moving around, I do like if they... I would have liked them to be a little more, more centrally located, I guess. Sure. So... And now they're coming in here, making sure that Tim keeps this zone. Though I, I think that'll be, that'll be a pretty tough zone to hold on to once these machine wraiths start popping out from these wraith engines and getting over there. So uh, I wouldn't count on Tim scoring much more than one more point out of this. A machine wraith, a machine wraith popping out of this wraith engine from one of these guys dying and then getting in here, it's going to be real tough. The only way that he has really to give magic weapons is Madrak going over there or uh, this Krill Stone, which is, I think, somewhere in this area right here. So, a machine right there, I don't think is, uh, I don't think Tim's, Tim's looking great. All right, so both players get a CP. The score is now Aaron, yep. Tim Mankey 4, Aaron 2. It is yep. now bottom of round 4. Yep, and I think uh, it's very important that Aaron scored to this point here, right? Like, it keeps him, it, uh, it makes sure that he's not be falling behind on this scenario, right? Yeah. Now that we don't have the feet anymore, I think these two stalkers don't like super threaten this Madrak. So I think the, the play here is to bring the stalkers to the south, kind of get down here with them, uh, get, get down into that southern zone by the flag, and then if we can kind of secure all of this, right, we can get a Derek Wraith over here to this flag, this Wraith engine puts in some work. Uh, whatever these banes that are not knocked down can get into here. <clears throat> so maybe we can get a stalker into here. This stalker cleans up the stone. And then I think he's going to control this entire portion of this map. Uh, and once that happens, uh, I think a machine wraith here in this corner coming out of this wraith engine is going to make sure that nothing ever scores this zone again. Uh, and Aaron will just run away with this game on control points very, very quickly. So Tim, certainly on the back foot here. 
Uh, is not happy with how his turn went, I don't think. And I think uh, Aaron is in a oh. great position to kind of take control of this game. Interesting. Aaron Interesting. just asked the judge, Will Schick, is the Mauler within 10 of Madrak? Ah, so I think so he's he, thinking... Yeah, you take out the rune barrier, you lose Arcane Repeater, then his controller goes down to 10 inches, he has no transfers. Assuming assuming this guy dies down here too, right? No, no, he was asking if he was in 10. This guy? Yeah. That's the bomber. That's what I meant, the bomber. He was asking okay. if the bomber was in 10, within 10 inches. The measurement was... this I is looking like a charge here, maybe? <laughs> yeah, I believe the measurement was, no, he's not within 10 inches. Well, if that's true, this Wraith engine might be able to get that done. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, Derek Wraith can pick up a Hellfire, probably. We'll see. But this this involves a uh, a Rune Bearer going down. Yes. Yeah, and that guy's not exactly easy to kill. No. Like, he's still a troll. He's got tough. So he's whatever your plans are, yeah, he's also 30% like, worse. He's also back in Narnia. Yeah. So. Yep. Players are starting to get down there below time. Once somebody gets below five minutes, you'll yeah. get Mania Will, and I'll just start going crazy over uh, here. I'm ready. I mean, like, what is happening? <laughs> what are we going to do? <laughs> we get, let's both just freak out. Wow. <laughs> but no, I, I think Aaron has a, a solid chance of, of just winning this right now. Okay, so um, Dark Guidance has been cast? If, if, assuming that these things are not in control, right? Like, like that kind of stuff can, can certainly work out. All right, we see Scar advances. Scar's walking up, making sure whatever does get to that rune bearer is going to have... Cast Dark Guidance. Yeah, and Dark Guidance is now out. But we're making sure that anything does get to that rune bearer is going to have Dark Guidance. All right, Inflictor advances. Uh, uses the, non, like the, the shield to punch the stone. Let's see if it's not Snake Eyes. It's not Good. Snake Eyes for tough. the damage. Does not tough. No, let it go. What's a die? So there's no more Spirit Chaser. These Wraith Engines can do whatever they like. Next attack it goes at one of the Fin Blades. With the Scorpion Tail on the Fin Blade, he dies. Hiya! So Aaron, uh, in our gauntlet last year, got second place. Yeah. Uh, Lost to Pat Dunford in the finals. Absolutely. That would be an amazing rematch if it was yeah, Pat it versus Aaron. Oh, man. If it's, if I would it's love that. We've got another right. Mortal Fear out there and then a reposition. No, no, I think he cast Death Ride. Death Ride, okay. And then he repositioned. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. so he stood up, cast Death Ride, and repositioned. Uh, Aaron confirming the health stats on the rune bear in the back. And I think we're going to see an assassination attempt here. I think we are. I am always uh, scared of situations like this. Um, he's left his zone. So if he, if he bungles this and doesn't, doesn't get it, he's not going to score a point. We'll see. There's no jacks. There's no caster in there. The he Wraith the Engine's probably going to leave yeah. uh, and yeah. go even farther. He has the that's, battle that's always scary to he me. He has the Battle Engine in the Circular Zone that could literally just run down if it had uh, to. True. True. Yes. Um, Tim's going to score a point. <laughs> yeah. And in his zone, probably. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, so these kind of things are just always really scary to me, right? Like, if these stalkers don't get it done, you can very easily lose this game. All right, the stalker goes in, walks in, leaps, and uh, it's it's go time, boys and girls. <clears throat> yep. So he's going to stab the rune bearer first. Need that five, five to, hit. to hit. 
Ooh, barely hits it with Dark Guidance. Bo boosting damage, pal 12, looking for a 7 to kill. Has Grievous Wound, so no tough roll allowed. Gets an 8. Gets it with Gets an 8. Him. Another attack into Madrick in the back arc. Madrick now has a 10-inch Katoria and no longer has any transfer targets because all of his beasts are just out. Okay, scroll is not used by Madrick. Boosting damage. Minus five on this damage roll. Does three damage to Madrick. It's not a great roll. It's not a great roll. These stalkers are only POW 12. Like, well, they don't do a ton of work. Here comes Papa now here, Yeah, here comes Papa Bear. <laughs> All right. God, I almost would have done this one first. Well, he had to clear. He didn't want any transfers to go through. So you have to kill the room sure, bear Sure, sure. I, I, I just wonder if this guy could have got to the room bear is my question, oh. right? And then you even get a machine wraith out of it. <laughs> tee -hee. Double checking, he death he the death ride from um, Derek Wraith gives the extra inch the Wraith engine needed to be able to get in and charge it in turn yes. in place, which gives him all the, the distance. Yep. I recommend that the judge pauses the clock. Unless Looks they're moving like we it are right good now. to go. All right, they're moving it right now. Good, good. Just make sure that measurement was going to take too much longer. All right, he hits. We needed a seven to hit. It is hit. And it's coming in here. No, Tim is deciding if he's going to use the scroll or not. He has switched it back to his time to decide if he wants to use the scroll. Yes. That first attack has hit on the charge attack, so he's just figuring out where the rest of the attacks are coming from. All right, scroll yep. is used. This is the second attack, non charge attack. And then the reason we decided to do that, right, is because it's a charge, so you know it's boosted. Yep. Does nine. Nine damage. Third attack. Hits. Straight dice damage. Does seven damage. Hey. Tough check. Grievous. All oh, right, God, Grievous. That's There's it. And Tim goes down. The Wraith engine completes the assassination. Good game. Woo, that was close. Good game. And what a great game between players. Yes, absolutely. So uh, kind of what I was saying at the start of the game, I don't think Tim got enough out of his feet. He needed to get a lot more attrition out of that. He yeah, needed absolutely. to put a lot more pressure onto Aaron uh, as far as scenario goes. So he feed it a little early maybe. He positioned yeah. a little weird. I'm not exactly sure where it went wrong. Uh, but I think he needed to get more more out of his feet to, yeah. to really be able to get that. But still a really well-played game. Absolutely. And a really great game to watch. And it absolutely. came down to a really such an exciting assassination when so little time absolutely. left. So that was, that was a great end. Um, I don't believe... The Everett Dunford game has ended, at least not in the last like minute that I've checked. So nope. pay attention. Come watch the next stream we'll be doing very soon as Aaron gets into the finals of IG for the second, second, year, in second row, year in a row. And we might have a rematch of him versus Dunford for this the IG finals, great. which would be amazing if that goes down. Absolutely fantastic. So we'll be back soon to commentate the IG World Championship here in a moment. We'll see you next game.